Ms. Bass. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for your service, uh, Director Ray. And I also want to thank you for finally abandoning the category of black identity extremists likely motivated to target law enforcement. My understanding now is that there is a new category, racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists. And uh, um, I'm actually concerned about this as well. And I'm concerned about it because of the FBI's long history of collapsing black activism in the fight for civil rights again, and especially against police abuse with terrorism. So even in this document, several black individuals and one organization is included along with well-known white supremacist domestic organizations, a domestic terrorist organization. Um, the FBI says from 2015 through 2019, approximately 846 individuals were arrested for domestic terrorism. And I wanted to know uh, how many of these were African American? Uh, Congresswoman, I, I appreciate your comments about uh, the changes we made in response uh, to some of the conversations we had in early in my tenure. Uh, on the so-called BIE issue. The particular document you're reading from, I'm not sure sitting here right now that I'm, I'm certain which document you're referring to, so maybe the best thing to do there would be for us to have my staff follow up with yours and be sure that I'm answering, yeah. Let me ask you several other questions. Do you know of any black domestic terrorist organization? Uh, could, you tell me their, could you tell me their names and what attacks that they have landed? I wanted to know if you consider our, if the movement for Black Lives or Black Lives Matter uh, is, a, is considered a racially motivated violent extremist organization. Uh, so th I'm, I appreciate the question because this is something that I think is important for me to be able to clarify really across the spectrum. So the first point that's really important here is that we don't designate domestic terrorist organizations, period unlike on the foreign terrorist uh, enforcement side where there's a specific statutory scheme for designating terrorist organizations, there is no such scheme for domestic terrorism, whether it's on the, uh, in the end that you're talking about or any other end. Having said this, but, 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 but can I, sorry. Organizations as domestic so, terrorists? Sorry? I, I couldn't hear the, you flickered out there. You don't, uh, you just said you don't consider, you don't designate organizations as domestic terrorist organizations? That's correct. What we do do is investigate individuals with proper predication. In some instances, those individuals will uh, conspire or engage in criminal conduct with each other. And in some cases, we will open a conspiracy investigation or a so-called enterprise investigation. Of black individuals are activists that are involved in the movement around police abuse or civil rights in those categories. And the reason why I'm asking that is because there's a number of Black Lives Matter individuals, leaders who have been visited regularly by the FBI in their homes, who have been asked about their plans for various protests, uh, et cetera. Some of those individuals might not be aware that if they misrepresent certain facts to the FBI that they could in fact be committing a crime. And so I wanted to ask you specifically about your surveillance of these organizations. And it's my understanding that there were a couple of protests uh, where the FBI did surveillance and used surveillance aircraft actually um, with organizations that were protesting in Washington DC and Baltimore. So we're, we're talking about a, a few different things here. So the first thing is um, we do investigate individuals for criminal activity that occur and violence that occurs in the middle of protests, regardless of what the basis of their protest is. And I really can't speak to specific cases because I would need to know the facts uh, and I would also need to make sure that I wasn't talking about an ongoing investigation. We do not investigate First Amendment groups we don't investigate people for speech, for association, for assembly, for membership in domestic First Amendment groups. Uh, we have had a few cases that I can think of off the top of my head uh, in the last two years um, involving individuals who committed domestic, we would consider domestic terror attacks, uh, justifying their attacks, lethal attacks I should add, 
justifying their attacks based on their interpretation of the so-called black Hebrew Israelite faith. And so that, that's probably the best example that I could give you, but that's about the only thing that comes to mind as we're sitting here talking right now. The gentlelady's time has expired. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. He made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who, um, 
went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanted to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.